There tends to be a lot of confusion around insulating basements, whether they should be insulated on the exterior or from the interior, whether you should use spray foam, foam board, or other products, and insulating basements incorrectly can lead to moisture issues and mold. Specifying the right type of insulation in the proper location within the assembly is absolutely crucial to the long-term durability of the basement walls and their ability to resist moisture. In this video, we're talking about the best practice strategies for insulating basements. Let's get into it. In new construction, basements can be insulated from the exterior with rigid insulation, whether it's in the form of EPS, GPS, or XPS foam board, rigid mineral wool, or fiberglass. This insulation strategy is not typically feasible for existing basements, as it would require the perimeter around the foundation to be excavated in order to access the foundation walls. Now, the concrete basement walls are first coated in a fluid applied or self-adhered waterproofing to create a water repellent surface to prevent moisture from potentially wicking inwards. Next, the rigid insulation boards are installed directly against the waterproofed basement walls. Then, a drainage mat is installed over the rigid insulation boards, providing a drainage plane between the wall and the backfill, preventing the buildup of hydrostatic pressure that could drive water into cracks in the foundation wall. Alternatively, the drainage mat can be installed against the basement walls prior to the insulation boards. However, we want to protect those insulation boards from damage during the backfill process, as well as from any bugs or pests. It's crucial that the rigid insulation layers are protected above and below grade, either with a cover board, a metal coil stock, or a drainage mat. Insects love to burrow into foam products, especially if the foam is wet or saturated with water, as this provides the perfect habitat for pests like ants and termites. Keeping the insulation dry is critical to maintaining the durability and R value of the assembly. It's important to note that despite the energy efficiency benefits of locating all of the insulation on the exterior of the assembly, all insulation types tend to degrade over time when located below grade if left unprotected, including rigid mineral wool, though it does tend to perform the best out of all of the insulation types. ICF, or insulated concrete forms, are gaining popularity in new basement construction, as the concrete formwork is composed of rigid insulation blocks that will provide the thermal resistance for the wall assembly after the concrete is cured without having to add additional insulation to the assembly. The continuous rigid insulation on both sides of the concrete wall provide an extremely stable interior temperature throughout the year, as there are very few thermal bridges in the system. The R value of the rigid insulation can vary depending on the ICF products specified, with some products exceeding R30 while other products are in the R21 range. Additionally, higher ratios of exterior insulation can be specified in some blocks to reduce heat loss and to keep the concrete wall closer to interior temperatures. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions about ICF construction is that ICF is waterproof. ICF is not waterproof. While they are moisture resistant, they still require a specific waterproof membrane or coating in addition to drainage to prevent water from finding a path into the basement walls through the seams of the foam blocks and being absorbed into the concrete. Now, the waterproofing product must be compatible with the EPS or XPS foam that makes up the ICF formwork, as solvent-based waterproofing systems will dissolve the polystyrene foam, so this means no spray-applied asphaltic waterproofing. We also can't use any hot-applied systems since this will melt the surface of the foam. Self-adhered or fully adhered membranes will provide more protection against insects from burrowing into the foam compared to a fluid applied or spray applied coating. After the ICF walls have been waterproofed, a dimple mat can be installed to prevent the buildup of hydrostatic pressure and to provide continuous drainage around the basement. We can also insulate on the interior, but we have to be careful about how we insulate and the types of insulation products that we use. When it comes to insulating on the interior, we have to ensure that we have a really good air control layer to prevent condensation on the cold basement walls. The first strategy that we can use is to install closed cell spray foam against the foundation walls. The benefit of using closed cell spray foam on the interior is that it provides the benefits of an air barrier, it provides a vapor retarder, and it has a very high R value per inch, all of which contribute to its ability to prevent condensation on the concrete basement walls. This opens up a lot of possibilities for hybrid wall assemblies in which a combination of closed cell spray foam can be used in combination with air and vapor permeable insulation types, such as unfaced fiberglass bats, cellulose, wood fiber, and mineral wool bats, but only as long as the proper insulation ratios are respected. As a general rule, a minimum of two inches of closed cell spray foam should be applied in order to gain the benefits of an air barrier, a vapor retarder, and adequate condensation control. Now, something to note, we have had some off-gassing issues with spray foam, both closed cell and open cell, 
At the moment, we're not recommending it as a solution until we figure this stuff out. Something else that needs to be mentioned, don't attempt to insulate the basement walls with closed cell spray foam in an existing basement if there's evidence of leaks or if proper drainage has not been provided, as this can trap water behind the spray foam layer, and eventually this water can make its way inside. We have a whole video on insulating existing basements, which you can go and watch up here. If you're looking for a complete guide on how to build a dry, comfortable, and durable basement, get my guide to basement design only available at asiri-designs.com shop. In this guide, we discuss everything from waterproofing and drainage techniques, insulating, condensation control, egress wells, HVAC considerations, and more. Links will be in the description below. The next option that we have, and my personal preference, is to install taped rigid foam insulation products such as EPS, GPS, XPS, or polyiso against the foundation walls. Rigid foam products can serve as air barriers if the joints are taped, and at thicknesses of 2 inches or greater, they're effective vapor retarders, preventing moisture-laden interior air from diffusing through the insulation. The key to the success of this strategy is ensuring that all of the joints and seams in the rigid insulation are taped to prevent air leakage from depositing moisture onto the cool concrete foundation walls. Then, the framed walls can be installed and can either be insulated with unfaced bats or blown-in insulation, or left uninsulated. My preference is to leave the stud cavities uninsulated to maximize the drying potential in the event that air leakage deposits moisture that results in condensation from any joints that may have not been properly air sealed. Now, if you don't want to use foam products in your project, you do have some options. We have to resort to an interior smart vapor retarder membrane to prevent moisture from diffusing into the wall cavity and potentially condensing on the cold concrete basement walls. But unlike standard polyethylene, smart vapor retarders allow moisture to dry out at the stud cavities if or when conditions become wet or humid. This allows us to insulate with air and vapor permeable insulation materials in isolation, but very much like the rigid foam strategy, the key to a successful installation is ensuring that the membrane is taped in every lap, seam, and penetration. We also need to provide a service cavity to prevent unnecessary penetrations in the membrane. This can be accomplished by installing 2x3 horizontal furring strips or strapping over the smart vapor retarder, and then that way we can run electrical conduit and plumbing runs without violating the integrity of that air barrier. This also provides a fastening base for the drywall or interior finishes. If outlets have to project into the stud cavities, they can simply be sealed to the smart vapor retarder by using an airtight enclosure box. For more information on basement detailing, head over to asiri-designs.com where we have plenty of free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics, including insulating and retrofitting basements, preventing leaks, controlling humidity, and so much more. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.